Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and today I want to talk about QQQI, which is a brand new ETF offering from NEOS, same group that brought us SPYI. And I had the opportunity to catch up with Troy Cates, who's the baby daddy or co-founder of NEOS and find out all about this fun this week. So I thought I'd share that with you today. If that is what you're looking for, please stick around. Whoop. So first of all, I do need to congratulate the folks over at NEOS on reaching $1 billion of asset center management with SPYI. That's quite an accomplishment. If you go back to my first video, I was making fun. Look, I had this chart up, you know, I was being very juvenile. I had, I had Neo popping up out of nowhere, making funny sounds. Watch out. You know, and after talking to Troy, you know, he certainly could have gone, I told you so, but he didn't. He was, I would have done that, but he didn't do that. Very good job. So now I, shoes on the other foot. I need to kind of start sucking up a little bit back to the guys over there because if they continue on this path, they're over on the East Coast. They're going to get that like house in the Hamptons. It's going to be like summer house, 50 and over parties. I swear it's going to be just like a Sienna will be there. I know some of you know who this is. Mullet guy yeah. is going to be there. I know. I know some of you guys watch this garbage. It's not just me, right? Confess down below. But anyway, Congratulations on reaching $1 billion. It looks like they're on a great track. And QQQI falls right in behind SPYI with the very same functionality as SPYI, but based on the NASDAQ 100. So if you are a fan of SPYI, you are likely going to be a fan of QQQI. After all, they are the same strategy, only one's based on the S&P 500, while the other one's the NASDAQ 100, same option strategy. And I'm of the belief that if you like these types of funds, mixing them together for diversification purposes will yield better results in the long run, right? So if you're a person that would be willing to sign something that says, give me a 10 to 12% return, pay me every single month and protect my basis, all the money that I put in, in the first place, then uh, putting these together makes sense to me. So let's take a look at QQQI over here on the NEOS website. They're calling it the NASDAQ 100 high income ETF. This is one of those ETFs that pays you every single month. People like that idea. It has an expense ratio of 0.68%. That's in line with SPYI. It's a little bit higher than others, a little bit lower than some covered call ETFs as well. Kind of in the middle. Uh, there is some justification for that a little bit higher expense. We can talk about that towards the end of the video. It's a brand new fund. Fund Inception's 130 of 2024. And what everybody really gets excited about is obviously the distribution yield, which is only based on probably one distribution thus far. Uh, but talking to the folks over at NEOS, they think this one will fall in that 13 to 15% range. That's their target. But I always say that yield always comes with sacrifice. So this one's a little bit higher than SPYI, just to compare their two products together. That's because they, if you sell out of the money, let's say 3% against both funds, QQQ is a little bit more volatile. It's going to yield a little bit more through those options. But the sacrifice is the volatility itself. So you might have higher yield here, but you might also have uh further to fall in bad times let's just put it that way so uh, don't just put all your money into one i still like the idea of balancing between both of these funds and overall you'll still have a very nice yield between the two uh certainly and then if the funds can hold up maybe you're hitting your goal if we scroll down a bit we'll see the targeted benefits of qqqi's strategy the fund seeks to distribute high monthly income generated from investing in the nasdaq 100 index and implementing a data-driven call option strategy. It's actively managed. The fund seeks to take advantage of tax loss harvesting. In addition to utilizing NDX index options, which classify as Section 1256 contracts, which are subject to lower 6040 tax rates. So a lot of what uh, goes into these NEOS funds are focused on uh, tax efficiency. And uh, that's one of the perks of this fund. I think one of the reasons that people are gravitating towards it one of the reasons I think it's up to $1 billion of assets under management because people are starting to recognize that aspect of these funds. The fund utilizes a call option strategy that may include both sold and purchased NDX index options, which may provide an opportunity for upside capture in rising equity markets. To date, they have never bought any NDX index options. It's only selling options to generate that income. So uh, they haven't had a market where they've needed to do that. Investment objective, the NEOS NASDAQ 100 I income ETF seeks to generate high monthly income in a tax efficient manner with a potential of equity appreciation. Sounds awesome. If we scroll down some more, we get to the distributions page and we can see that they have had two so far, one for 59 cents and one for 60 cents. 
Next one goes X dividend date on 424. So you need to own it on 423 if you want to be eligible for that distribution. Scroll down some more and we get to the top holdings, which is the NASDAQ 100. So it has all, all those familiar stocks you're used to, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Meta, right there at the top, 100 stocks and all, and then those options. So let's try to take a look at some options. Now they do make it very convenient to download all the holdings from the fund right from the website. And you can do that. That's what I did here. That's what you see. It is just the NASDAQ 100 though, but we can also find uh, the index options that they have sold uh, in this case at this time. So let's talk about the strategy a little bit. Fund strategy, it's a covered call strategy where they own the NASDAQ 100 stocks and they're going to sell NDX index options and they can do this against a portion of the fund. So they don't have to do it against the full value of the fund. They can use 60, 70, 80% and allow for some growth, which is really nice, right? Also takes advantage of 1256 contracts like we've talked about, which gives you that 60, 40 tax treatment. We'll talk about more, that, more about that at the end. They can buy calls, although they never do that, uh, haven't yet. Uh, they sell out of the money, anywhere from one and a half to about 4% out of the money. They pick an expiration date out six to seven weeks into the future. And around halfway through that, around three or four weeks into, the, uh, into those options, they roll them out into the future, out six to seven weeks again. So let's take a look and see where they sit right now. They've got two positions right now, okay? And the ND, NDX index is right now, not QQQ. The index itself is at 18,169.90 as of the close on 4.924. And they've got these two positions. One's a call at 18,675, which puts it 2.78% still out of the money. And the other one is 18,950, which puts it 4.3% out of the money and the expiration on both of these is 517 which puts that out about five weeks so looking okay and they have 18 contracts against both of these so these big scary red numbers it looks like we owe money <laughs> not fun but if the index itself stays below these two strike prices we get to keep all that uh, if it goes flying past this, of course, there's that trade-off, right? Where we're getting the rise in the value of the fund and hopefully we didn't sell against the full value of the fund, which they typically don't. So we still have to get some the increase in the value of the stocks, but we start getting the offset from losing value in the options, right? We start owing more and more against these option positions, but that's how it works. Looking pretty good right now and, and a good overall solid strategy. So one of the key aspects of this fund and SPYI, and one of the reasons that I think you might be able to justify the expense ratio of 0.68% is the tax efficiency. So I think if you wanna buy this type of fund, either one of these, you wanna go in for the long haul, just like you would with an MLP. You wanna buy and you wanna hold that type of product. So if we think about 2023 and SPYI, I believe the fund was up about 5%. You can verify this. It was up about 5% if you disregarded uh, the distribution rate of about 12%. So fund went up in value. But when you got your tax statement, right, you would have had a return on capital of around 65%. So imagine all the distributions that you received and uh, you get to discount 65% as return of capital, right, reduction to basis, that's fine. And I'm not a tax advisor. But uh, you're, you're, you're reducing your basis and you can just ride that into the ground year after year after year, who cares? Right? Because the income that you're receiving is very tax efficient. 65% return of capital, you don't pay anything. It leaves 35%, and then we have the 60-40 tax treatment on top of that. And some of that will be qualified dividend income as well. So that becomes a very tax efficient product, even in a taxable account. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons that we're seeing some significant growth in SPYI. Am I wrong? Of course, this will not happen every year. And you might be thinking, why did it happen this past year? Well, I would suspect it is primarily due to losses in the options from a hot 2023. So last year, the S&P was up about 25%. So just to offer an example, with the options they have right now on QQQI that we just looked at, with the index at 18,169 and sold calls at 18,675, you see a value of $383,220. So let's assume that was the premium that they received when they sold the calls. So if the index takes off to 19,000 over the next few weeks, each option would be worth 19,000 minus 18,675, which would be 325 points, 
or $32,500 each with 18 contracts, you'd have to pay about $585,000 at expiration and realize around a $200,000 loss on the options. Now, these numbers are just estimates, by the way, you know, since they are rolling prior to expiration, you know, I just wanted to illustrate the idea. However, let's not forget they do own the index as well, so they have the gain on that side from all those stocks appreciating in value. They just didn't sell any stock, but that realized loss in the options can be used as ROC or return to capital. Now, if we have a market that is declining, you should expect that return of capital percentage to drop during that year and the income will likely be less tax efficient in those years. So what do you think about QQQI? Is this something you've already purchased? Are you considering it? Do you own SPYI? Let me know down in the comments below. I will be talking to Troy soon. I wanna give him one more opportunity to say I told you so and get a little bit closer to that Hamptons house. But I wanna hear from you and any questions you might have, I will ask him as well. I wanna find out more about this in the coming months as we get more information. So uh, love to hear your thoughts. Now, if you like this type of thing, please like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you real soon. Take care. Boop.